Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to be taking you through the complete story of how I beat the Ender Dragon on a one block world. This is a series that was originally intended to only be a single episode, but you guys liked it so much that we pushed through and made it all the way to the Ender Dragon. So how the one block series works is it's like a sky block, except you spawn in on a single block. You then break that block and it spawns another. And slowly, week by week, we worked to make it all the way to the end. And so here's the story of how we got there. So I went into this mod absolutely blind. Roman, my editor, was actually the one who picked it for me. And at the first episode, as you can probably tell, I had no idea what I was doing. I was basically getting lots of dirt and clay and, well, it didn't really seem all that useful. But the one block is special because it actually has a progressive block system. And so there are 10 unique biomes or areas that give you unique blocks specific to that area. And so the first biome was Plains, where we actually ended up getting mobs. Now, this is basically the biggest mistake I think I made in the entire series. And what that was, was not keeping these mobs around. See, I had no idea what I was doing. So I just kind of assumed that, well, you know, there'll be more. Anyway, I would go on to play the rest of of the entire series without any majorly useful mobs. No cows, no chickens, no pigs, and no sheep. Actually, I did catch on to keep a few animals, but it wasn't enough, and eventually they all would come to die. I then made it to the second biome, caves. Caves, as you would expect it, are a little bit different, with all sorts of cobblestone and different rock. But instead of spawning your normal plains animals, they spawn cave monsters. And in my blissful ignorance, I was not expecting that a creeper would spawn on me. And it, it, it did. And this was the result of my first death. I want diamonds. Oh, no! But the even bigger mistake that I had was that I put my chest right beside the spawn. So it was at this point I realized, okay, this is not just a friendly sky block and we gotta pick it up. But eventually with a little bit of blood, sweat and tears, we did make it to the third biome. And just like you'd expect from a Super Mario game, the third level was snow and ice. Now, one of the best things about this biome is that wolves spawn and you can obviously tame them. I didn't tame the first one. You'd also get polar bears, which are completely useless. And then a snow fox spawned in and killed my chicken. Now, the other thing I did around this time was increase the depth of my island from one block to two. You looking back, I probably should have just placed water, but, um, well, you know, I wasn't all that smart. Anyway, I just kind of jumped off the world and placed it as I was falling, and somehow it actually worked. Now, one of the biggest mistakes you can see me making here is really not optimizing my dirt. Logs are infinite in this game because you can get as many saplings as you want, but dirt is a very important finite resource, or at least finite up until you get to the nether where you can get gravel and create coarse dirt. But yeah, what I should have been doing here is making trees, using that wood to make my island bigger. Instead, I'm wasting dirt. Anyway, I did continue through the snow biome and I eventually managed to tame my very own wolf. I then used all my precious rock to make my island much bigger. And then I used all the wooden planks that I had to create a wooden platform, which would eventually actually become my house. I also started a very simple farm, which wouldn't last very long. Now, the fourth biome that we would encounter is the ocean, which, well, this is where it got interesting. Started getting a lot of turtles and I like turtles, so I didn't want to just kill them. But I would come to find out that turtles are very, very annoying. And well, eventually we would lose them all. This is also the point in the series where I would start to get absolutely overrun with stuff. See, the goal of one block is to give you every single item possible so that you can do whatever you want. But 95% of things you don't really need. Seashells and coral, and it's just a lot of stuff that I was not focused on. But with the various ocean monument blocks that I got, I did end up getting enough so that I could make a house out of it. It was definitely a different style, but it ultimately lasted the entire game, and I still kind of liked the look of it. It was just like a nice little storage temple. It was cute. Now I continued my way through the block and eventually, ladies and gentlemen, after many, many hours, I hit diamonds. And of course, as every Minecraft player would do, I made a pickaxe. And then I hit the jungle and well, <laughs> this is where everything goes horrible. You see, I hadn't really learned my lesson from that creeper all the way back in the first episode. I was very naive thinking, you know, there's no way the game is gonna spawn anything super aggressive on us. And oh boy, was I wrong. I didn't have any armor. Heck, I hadn't even made an iron sword yet. Just seemed like a waste of iron. And I would come to regret that quite a bit. Now everything was going great until we got to, yeah that episode. An evoker spawn. I don't know why the evoker spawn for the jungle. I guess it kind of makes that. Eh, no, you know what? It doesn't make sense. And I hated it. 
So an evoker spawns and well, I was completely and utterly unprepared. I had no sword, no armor on a tiny island to fight multiple Vex. So as you can expect, I died. And then I died again, and then again. And this was finally motivation for me to make an iron sword and a shield. So I then crafted some iron armor and it was time. In a head-on charge, I ran straight at the evoker and did manage to kill him, but the Vex were still there and I died again. Now, eventually I did manage to take care of the Vex and some of them just died on their own. Um, so, yeah, it was at this point in the series that I realized we were in a little bit deeper than I had expected. Maybe not quite in over my head, but you know, at least up to my shoulders. I then had a witch spawn in on the world and my wolf actually finally came to the rescue and in an attempt to kill it, knocked himself off the map. More evokers spawned, I died a whole lot more. It was an absolute mess. But eventually I saw a light in the tunnel. We got a villager. Now, at this point, I had absolutely learned my lesson that this was a lot more extreme than I had thought. And, and so I made sure that I was going to save every single villager. And this would come to be the most useful thing of the whole series. Also, during one of the evoker fights, I did finally manage to get myself a totem of undying, which I would hold on to for the entirety of the game. I knew the ender dragon was going to be a one time shot, so I had to be prepared. And from here, I started setting up a village. Now, I didn't really know what I was doing at this point, and it was made only harder because, well, you know, finite resources. But after doing a bit of research, I came to the conclusion that the best thing for me was going to be a Fletcher. I can make as many trees as I wanted and well, trees equal sticks and sticks equal emeralds. And this Fletcher would actually help me to craft the bow that I would use to take on the Ender Dragon. I also made a toolsmith, which I would never end up using. They just take so much to level up and I did not have the resources for them. And then ladies and gentlemen, we made it, the Nether. So this is a really interesting point in the game because you finally reach a spot where you gain access to a very infinite number of resources. You can get netherrack and gravel. And while extremely breakable, netherrack is an easy thing to get that really helped expanding the island. I also got a second water bucket, which finally allowed me to make infinite water. And that was a really big day. Now, before I was ready to take on the nether biome, it was time for me to really work on the island had all sorts of blocks, it was time to go big. So I started working on all sorts of villagers. I had a farmer as well as a shepherd. Because I didn't have any sheep, I needed a shepherd so that I could get wool to make beds to get more villagers. And also started expanding my farm as well as my turtle tank. I also finally acquired a second sustainable resource, which were carrots. Definitely not as easy to come by and sticks were pretty much my main sort of economy, but it was nice to have as a secondary. Also, melon ended up being very helpful. I pretty much lived off melon this entire series. Oh, and I learned to make big jungle trees. A jungle tree would give me many, many stacks of jungle log, and ultimately this would just give us a million sticks. I also upgraded my Fletcher, and this gave me access to arrows and a bow. So as you can expect, the nether was pretty rough. Everything that could spawn in the nether, well, it, it spawned. We had wither skeletons. I got withered. Fortunately, I still actually had that cow at this point, so I did have milk to save myself. We had blazes. Now, the problem with blazes is that when you hit them, they kind of would go flying back, and I really wanted to get their blaze rods. I obviously needed blaze rods for the end portal. We would also get the occasional magma slime, but the most problematic thing that was spawning were ghasts. See, ghasts can break dirt with their attack, and well, chaos ensued. Also, one of the blazes accidentally caught my tree on fire, and well, yeah, the nether was just a whole mess. But we did manage to get more diamonds and make a whole bunch of obsidian, and I actually made it through it all right. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, after a very long grind, we got enough obsidian to create a nether portal. So the biggest reason I wanted to go to the nether was literally just for netherrack. It's crazy how you would never appreciate it in any other series, but it was so important in this. Because I was turning all my wood into sticks to get emeralds, I really didn't have anything to expand the island until I got netherrack. But I really wasn't comfortable there at this point, so that's pretty much all I did, and I went back and continued on the one block. I then made it to the seventh biome, Idol. This was basically just good stuff, bees, corpse, all kinds of things that wouldn't kill me. And then I also made an enchanting table. Now this was actually really huge. Obviously I was going to need enchantments if I wanted to take on the ender dragon, so this was a decent start. I had sugarcane, but finding leather was proving to be challenging. Until I remembered that you can actually breed a horse and a donkey to make a mule. Now I had a pretty good amount of gold at this point, so what I did is I used my carrots with the gold to make golden carrots, and then I fed it to them. While it was a pretty slow process, I was at least able to get a decent amount of them and uh, start working on 
on a bookshelf. The first things I got was sharpness one on my diamond sword, and I'm breaking one on my pickaxe. Now from here, I did a little bit of off-screen mining in the nether, and I got a whole bunch more netherrack. I made my island really big, and I would come to not use a whole lot of this space. Now from here, the series kind of got a little bit grindy. Just really just a lot of farming, harvesting, and really just continuing through the one block. Now, the problem I made here was with all this expansion came a lot of dark space. And just as I had thought I was over this issue, well, mobs started spawning back. Creepers and zombies and everything that wanted to kill me and ruin my plan started spawning in. So I basically just used the coal that I had made up to make a bunch of torches and pretty much fix this. Except there was a random corner that for the rest of the episode, no matter what I did, kept spawning mobs. It was really weird. But after a lot of grinding, I realized it was time to work on these villagers again. So I gave my villagers food and with the help of the shepherd making more beds, I eventually managed to breed my villagers. Really, as the playthrough went on, it would just come to be that the only thing useful was... Fletcher's. Fletcher's farmers, and I eventually made a librarian and a cartographer, which would kind of help as well. Now, things were really looking up for us. Everything was going great. At this point, it was just a matter of grinding through until I fell off my world. Yes, yeah, somehow after 13 episodes, I still hadn't learned to master the art of pressing shift. So I lost my diamond sword, my diamond pick, and a few other important things. It was a pretty devastating setback, but after the course of a few hours, I did manage to get everything back and actually improve some of my enchantments. And I actually got fortune one on my pickaxe. It also came with the bonus of efficiency three. So it's pretty good. And then I got fire aspect on my sword. Now from here, I knew it was really time to start upgrading my enchantments. So I went to the nether and tried to make a zombie pigment farmer. It didn't work very well. I died a lot. But progress on my Fletcher was actually going really well, and he had a pretty good enchanted bow. So I grinded my way through some sticks and ultimately managed to get two. I took his power two and his unbreaking two, made them together, and got unbreaking three and power three. And so ultimately, this is how I got power four on my bow. Also around this time, I learned how to make coarse dirt. Basically, all I needed to do was go to the nether, get gravel, and then combine it with the dirt that was around my island. As long as I had enough gravel, I could make as much dirt as I wanted. So I planted a really big farm out back. This wouldn't help too much, but it was sort of nice, I guess. I really should have just made it all carrots, but um, I was stubborn. Oh, and also at some point, I made it through the desert biome, but it was very uneventful. Anyway, the ninth biome was Desolation. This was pretty much just a stronghold, and there really wasn't a whole lot of exciting things here. But anyway, after a long hold trek through the stronghold, we made it to the final section, the end. Now, I knew we were getting close here, and I was not prepared for this at all. So what I wanted to do was get better in chance. I basically made a mob grinder on the side of the map, and through a lot of issues, I eventually got it to work. I definitely could have done it better, and I ultimately, I just decided to destroy it because, well, I didn't know what I was doing. But also, it did feel a little cheap. But ultimately, through these techniques, this would help me to pretty much get my end set. Diamond and armor laggings with protection 4 and unbreaking 3. A helmet with protection 2. Diamond boots with falling feather. A diamond sword with sharpness 4. Knockback 2. Sweeping edge 1. Fire aspect 1. And looting 3. The ultimate bow with power 4, punch 2, and unbreaking 3. A diamond axe with... <laughs> efficiency one and my diamond pickaxe with fortune two unbreaking two and efficiency three i was pretty much set but there was one last thing i needed to do potion brewing and with all that prep i was ready to take on the ender dragon and here's how it went well ladies and gentlemen today is the day from that little tiny block right there we have managed to make it to the end and this is really special because not only is this going to be me beating the ender dragon from a one block world, but it's also going to be me beating the Ender Dragon for my first time in single player. And on top of that, it's been a really long time. So let's get suited up, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a lot of good stuff for this. All right, so Feather Falling, Protection 2, Protection 4, Protection 4. We've got Sharpness 4 Sword, way more arrows than I'll probably need. We've got a pickaxe, we've got a bow, Ender Pearl, Golden Apples, Bread. We've got Cobblestone and Netherrack, because I mean, Come on, I kind of had to for this. We've got potions of slow falling and potions of strength. And of course, the big safety item that we have been holding on to for a very long time, the totem. But really, the thing that I'm so worried about this is that if we get knocked off, it's basically game over. <laughs> We're not living in a world of infinite resources here, and we're pretty much out of diamonds. We're pretty much out of a lot of stuff. So, calculated the odds. I mean, it, it, if we don't make this first try, it's not gonna look very good. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, we started this playthrough on this single block. I think it would be appropriate to, to end on here too. Oh, oh right. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, ah, I'm nervous. Ah! Here we go.
Oh, well, that's nice. Okay, outside. Oh, well, that was fantastic. Okay, first things first, the potion. All right, here we go. Ah! Here we go. Ah! Oh, oh my, it's been a while. Easy. Okay, actually, this is not, this is not, this is not too bad, but... Ah! Oh, we gotta, oh, what? How did I, okay, okay. We came prepared, we came prepared, we came prepared. Oh, I think I got another one on me. Quick bread. Come on. The perfect trajectory. Oh, that's a high tower. Woo! Okay, okay. Woo! Whoop! Yep. Ooh, did we hit that? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, the slow falling is so good. Why did I never think of that before? Okay, here we go. We're going up. Oh, okay. Okay, I think we should be fine. Boom. Oh, we gotta get that. Ah! Okay, we're good, we're good. Another potion. Yeah, and what do we got left? We got, yeah, I think that's the last one. Okay, quick golden apple, because why not? Oh my God, the slow falling is so good, dude. Serious shout out to Luke for that. I never even thought of it. Oh, 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 look how good that is. Oh my God. That could have been an easy death right there. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Oh, and we got damage. Nice, nice, nice. Nailed that. Okay, one more, one more. I think that's it. Come on. Oh, that was so close. That's the shot. No. Oh, he's got two. G, I don't know. Oh, we're so close. Oh, we got it. Okay. And... Yes, I think that's it. Okay, quick, 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 quick. Potion. Oh, this is such a good, oh my God, yes. Ah! Okay, 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 okay. I'm getting out, uh, I'm getting out of the way. Uh, I'm getting out of the way. Yes, yes. Damage. Ah! Okay, nice, nice. That was good, that was good. Okay. You ever hear why they call me Sharpshooter Pat? Well, you're gonna learn today. Woo! And, uh... Think! Oh my god! He's unstoppable! Somebody stop him! Stop him! Woo! Oh, oh, oh! Yup, 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 yup! Oh, 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 oh! We got beef! I think we got beef! I think we got beef! No beef, no beef, no beef, no beef! Okay, okay. Woo! Who's after me? Who's after me? Okay, okay. I think we're good. But so is this dragon still. Ah, the tactical maneuvers. Oh, potions, oh, potions, oh. Oh my god. Unstoppable. Here we go, here we go. Yup. Yup. Yup, one more, one more. Nice. Potion. Okay, not a good spot, but that's okay. Oh no. Okay, okay. Yes. Yes. One, another act for the win. Yes. Okay, okay. I think we got this, guys. And a digger! And... Okay, okay. I think this is it. The snipe! Ladies and gentlemen! There it is. Right there. Oh my god, the XP! Oh my god, it's so beautiful! It's so beautiful! I promise I'll never die! I promise. <sighs> nice. Oh, I never even thought about something to bring that, but... Oh, is that how that always works? Ladies and gentlemen! Did I, uh... Did I do something bad with that egg? <laughs> Was I not supposed to do that? <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, 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 okay, we cool, we cool.